All right, let's get our Facebook folks in here. Got the spinning wheels going. One and two. All right, welcome in, welcome in, everybody. It is Tuesday morning, the 14th, and man, what a day one of free agency. I am Nick Kendall, and joined by, as always, Scott Kennedy on these morning shows. This is Broncos for Breakfast. Scott, how are you doing, man? I feel like with all the Broncos and Falcons news, we're <laughs> drinking through a fire hose right now. I'm coming up for oxygen, man. It feels like the, the Bonneville salt flats. You get done writing up one thing or talking about one thing, all of a sudden, here's another signing. Um, you know, and, and in the case of the Broncos, another signing may be somewhere else. You know, here comes some news. There goes some news. Mm. Whew, what an opening 24 hours to the contact period of free agency. Yeah, pretty amazing. We got uh, Bradley Congress saying, let's go. I think that's effing go, maybe. Uh, <laughs> also, Jetty Splash saying, should be a good podcast. Well, I don't have my new computer yet, so hopefully it holds up. I asked Chad yesterday a couple of times, hey, when's it coming in? And then he texts me right before bed saying, hey, I'll get to you tomorrow. All right, well, we still got this one today, so hopefully you can hold out for at least one more show. Kevin Gray, Morning Broncos Country. Nick, I love the O, looking good, trying not to get my hopes up or get it too hyped. Um, Denver Broncos for life. Yeah, it'll be fun. Um, the offense should be better. We'll get into it. Kevin Gray, yeah, this is my favorite show. Well, you're our favorite Kevin Gray, so <laughs> we appreciate you, Kevin. Uh, Kathy Lund, good morning, fam. Broncos were big spenders so far. I'm a little bummed they didn't re-sign Draymond Jones. A lot bummed he's going to Seattle. Why Seattle? Hey, now. Don't talk too much crap about Seattle. We we're living out here. We uh, love it um, personally, but uh, yeah, no, it's. I wish him nothing but the best. The Broncos went with Zach Allen for slightly cheaper, and Draymond Jones is getting a massive payday day one. They're paying like twenty four million against the cap year one or something. Uh, interesting structure of that contract, but uh, I don't weep too much for Draymond Jones. You guys know I've been a big fan from him for a bit, but bringing in Zach Allen for slightly less than familiarity with the defensive coordinator and an ascending player that's also young and talented and versatile. If the Broncos, you know, didn't bring in another defensive line, I'd be worried uh, right now about the defensive front. But <clears throat> with Zach Allen, I feel I feel pretty good. I like them. I like the move. You know, if you were to say I'm trading for uh, I'm trading Draymond for Zach Allen in cap space, okay, I'll make that move. I think I mentioned I've put the link in here a few times. I like the uh, the efficiency the value rating that spot rack has now started using where they do the production against contract and i think zach allen was the number two defensive end edge in in the nfl last year i was like well what about this guy um you know part of that was because he was cheap you know he was yeah. cheap but so was Traymond jones he was really cheap last year too coming off of that what third round contract nick yep so you know 17 and a half is about what he got on average broncos weren't willing to pay that that tells me something the Broncos said we, we would be better off. And you and I had that discussion, Nick, would the Broncos be better off spending 15 million at right tackle or re-signing Draymond Jones? We, f we found out what the Broncos thought, Nick. Yeah. And I thought it was always, you know, the right tackle or the defensive line spending. I didn't think it was going to be right tackle plus a defensive lineman like Zach Allen, who, and a guard and a guard and bringing back Singleton and the, intriguing quarterback uh option as well for backup level but uh still intriguing jeremy sean good morning boys looks like a beautiful day all over broncos country also dwi guy coming in saying good morning gents in broncos country cia coming in guard room looks good don't know how i feel about mcglinchy just yet but still the best right tackle we've had in a while put in the money we have to um we had on draymond i mean broncos had money to spend and this is one of the benefits of having wealthy owners and also being a team with Relative cap space compared to a NFL that is a lot of people you know, bumping their head up against the cap. So the Broncos could be aggressive. They had the money to do it. They gave out a lot of guaranteed money yesterday as mm -hmm. well. Uh, so this is this is that Walton Penner group coming in. And I also wonder if bringing in Sean Payton, there's probably some guarantees that, yes, uh, guys that you want, we will have the money. We, we will not be outbid. Sounds like the Broncos yesterday early on with uh, Mike McGlinchey. First reports from, I think it was Deanna Rossini who did report him signing the Broncos said the Bears are closing in on Mike McGlinchey. Ten minutes later, uh-oh, <laughs> here comes the Broncos and then Broncos have signed Mike McGlinchey and they paid heavily uh, for yeah. him. It was, but it's it's nice to, and we said this at the beginning, you know, the Broncos and the salary cap, they were going to have a bunch of money. You mm -hmm. know, you just looked at the contracts for for the, the faults that you might have with George Payton and and we tend to focus on the negative and some of his negatives were really negative last year for mm -hmm. sure. He's very very good at managing the salary cap. Very good. If I've got a good cap manager along with owners who have cash on hand, you can get free agents, you can restructure contracts, you can do all of those things. 
we talked yesterday about why not restructure Russ's contract. And we, we went through that, um, through that yesterday. And you've got to have certain parameters to fit to be able to restructure a contract. Mm -hmm. But you can do that. And when even if you go to spot rack and look at the cap tracker and when zero available is middle of the road because everybody else is either already over the cap or just barely and you know you can clear up about 40 million dollars with three moves like this by snapping your fingers you're gonna have some dough mm -hmm. and with a new coach uh plenty of talent still on hand you know you can turn last year into an aberration you might have to overpay a little bit but, you know, uh, part of that is, is some of the relationships you're going to bring in. Getting a guy like Zach Allen because you're bringing in Vance Joseph, maybe you don't get him otherwise. And then you're really you're really scrambling at that other defensive end spot, Nick. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I mean, Zach Allen is a, a hybrid player because he's defensive end and defense tackle. And we saw that from uh, Draymond Jones as well. Mostly defense tackle, but he did have like, you know, 150 plus snaps at uh edge in different looks as well. So you're going to get that with Zach Allen also in this defense. And I love it, especially if a team's going to be more blitz centric, you need an inside outside pass rusher that can give you uh different alignments out there. So I'm Zach Allen was my favorite sign. And I couldn't believe it when the Broncos uh, announced that one yesterday after the other moves, Mark Schrader coming in. How about them Broncos? Yeah, they definitely spent big yesterday. Uh, I'm always, maybe it's just, you know, celebrating the Russell Wilson move big time last year and then seeing it fall flat. I'm very much a, okay, they made moves. Now let's see how the moves work out. We're in the evaluation stage now. They made their their moves, but we'll see how they play out over time. Because uh, I can all but guarantee you that at least one of these moves we're going to look back on and be like, maybe you shouldn't have done that one because that's the reality of free agency, uh, mm -hmm. that game that you play. Yeah, and, and I think maybe, you know, we talk about the linemen will we'll be the highest risk players, mm -hmm. uh, McGlinchey and Powers and Michael Ranquillo. And thank you for the stars, Mark Schrader. Uh, Michael Ranquillo coming in with some stars as well. He says, good morning, Nick and Scott on Broncos for breakfast. Go Broncos and buck them with a B. And and then um, Michael follows up with some stars saying, I, I, I got my favorite guard, Ben Powers, in free age, NFL free agency. Now, um, Nick, with Dalton Reisner, I've been critical of his play. In fact, when I first started this, you know, about um, six weeks into last year, my first year covering the Broncos, I asked y'all behind the scenes, I'm like, why is why does Dalton Reisner get a pass? How come nobody is criticizing how bad he has been? And y'all are like, well, he was really good two years ago, local guy, fan favorite, all this stuff. I'm like, okay, well, he's not very not playing very well. That continued. So you've got Dalton Reisner, who you could have re-signed at a third of the price. You've got the money to re-sign Dalton Reisner, and you didn't. Yeah. Speaks volumes to me. You, the, the Broncos made choices on some of the old players who have never been to the playoffs. Culture change, Nick. Mm -hmm. Even if you're just swapping out like for like, it's a culture change for me, Nick. Yeah, and you go out there and get a Baltimore Ravens offensive lineman. Now, I will say that the Ravens run such a unique scheme that like bringing in Ben Powers, it's almost like bringing in a more known quantity, but still like a, a player from the college level that runs a unique scheme because nobody runs what the Ravens are running. So trying to project him to what the, a more NFL <laughs> central centralized offense uh, like the Broncos will be running is somewhat of a projection, but Ben Powers, a uh, 6'4", 330 pounds. Thought it was really interesting. Uh, a lot of outlets like Sports Info Solution and other places out there, a uh, pass blocking win rate, whatever, or excuse me, run block win rate had uh, Powers rated pretty highly in the ground game. And then PFF did not really like him in the ground game. So I'm curious to see how that plays out. I think it's because while he is a, uh, you know, 6'4", 330 plus, he's not a great athlete. Uh, it's a reason that he fell to the fourth round coming out of Oklahoma. Uh, just not a great mover in space, you know, reaching that second level. He does not have any highlight level blocks. But mm -hmm. what he does do is that if he gets his hands on a guy, he can displace him and he's very technically refined in the pass game. You know, he can get in a spot. And you know what he doesn't do, Scott? Get in knocked backwards game. into the lap of the quarterback. That dude has an anchor on him. He <laughs> sits there, he sets his butt down, and he does not move. He plants himself. Um, yeah. And with that that's size a, that he has. That's a win. Oh, that's yeah. starting in the right direction. I, uh, I can't tell you, and, and I'm not getting paid for this. Can you imagine being, you know, when you're, if your job depended on, on those two guys? Yeah. And you're watching Cushenberry and Reisner, they're on skates. You yeah. know, we've said it a zillion times, yes, Russell Wilson can be play, play better, but until you can at least slow down the guy's coming right up the gut. 
I don't know what I've got on the rest of the offense because that is a failure point. I don't know if the engine works when my tires are flat. I don't know. So let's let's air up those tires. Get them, you know, get them good 50 PSI. Get some get some high octane test in there and see if the engine's any good. Because Russell Wilson is the engine of this team. Now let's see how how he's gonna do. Yeah. Without a David doubt, Kilgore David comes Kilgore. in. He's he, he's still working looking about two two positions here. Are we going to get a center and a running back today, maybe even a cornerback? Uh, when always scares me. Um, you you will get a center, you will get a running back, and you will get a cornerback. Does that happen today? Does that happen in the next couple of days of free agency? Does that happen in the draft? You know, I don't know, David, but you're you're still talking about the the positions, and you know, I would still look for more defensive line depth, Nick, as well. Yeah, defensive line, uh, safety, also replacing Kareem Jackson out there. I know the Broncos, there's been some uh, buzz about Chauncey Gardner-Johnson potentially uh, coming to Denver as well. So we'll see what happens. But I think center, you might be waiting a little bit until like the draft and then see what else is available there. You might have to get by with one more year of Lloyd Cushenberry there before resetting that spot. But we'll see. I, I would be shocked if the Broncos did not. They're going to sign some running back. You think? Even I let's say they invest heavier in the draft in that position, they're still going to sign somebody at some mm-hmm. point coming up here. So they'll definitely get a running back. I don't know about center though. Appreciate uh, so you, we'll David. See. Mike Mike has some good words here. He says, "I don't know who put the MHH staff together, but an amazing job inside and out. And you guys are pretty good too." Uh, it's Chad Jensen. Chad Jensen is MHH, and um, I used to put together networks, so I would find the Chad Jensens of the world and say, "Okay, you're going to be my Broncos guy. You're going to be." my Cleveland Browns guy, et cetera, et cetera. That's what I did for 10 years. Chad Jensen is genuinely one of the good people in this business. So he he's he's a he's good to work with, work for, and collaborate with through the years. I've known him for going on 10 years now. So appreciate yeah. you, Mike. Rob coming in, coming in green. He says, good morning, gents. The best MHH team. Well, thank you, sir. Says, loving yesterday's aggression. Thoughts on trading Sutton for a second drafting center. There's your center, David. John Michael Schmitz, and then signing. Uh, you're gonna have to help me with the 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 initials here. Chauncey Gardner Johnson Johnson Gardner, Junior. Chauncey Gardner Johnson Junior. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think this is a feasible plan. Uh, it does sound like that's something that came out yesterday from now like a third person. I think it was Mike Garofalo uh, saying that uh, the Broncos are taking calls. They're not aggressively shopping, but they're taking calls on their wide receivers. Well, when you've heard it from now you know, four or five different sources out there in the league or not sources, but uh, people who have sources in the league, there's probably more than smoke at this point. There's a, there's embers uh, for that trade smoke for the Broncos wide receiver. So we'll see if that happens. If you are taking John Michael Schmitz, it's probably with that second that you got from Sutton. I don't know if he's going to be there. Yeah. But if you get a second for Sutton, I think it's a possibility. It's going to have to be a high second. I think John Michael Schmitz, again, I hate using Cole Strange as like, well, if Cole Strange, you know, if Tim Tebow can go on the first, anybody can, you know, if Cole Strange can go on the first, but John Michael Schmitz, I think is a top notch center. And I think somebody that says, I want a center. We talked about it yesterday. I think the center position is really underrated. I think John Michael Schmitz is a fantastic prospect, a plug and play center. And if you're looking for that guy, you don't mind using a 27 on him, Nick. I agree with you. Center is so weird though, because it's probably one of the positions where like the athletic profile matters the least (laughs) out of all the spots. So it's, it's hard to evaluate from the data perspective. Also, John Michael Schmitz played in such a weird shotgun quarterback run heavy spread offense at Minnesota that I I know people like Dane Brugler didn't even have a day two grade on him uh, Mm -hmm. before the senior bowl. And he came to senior bowl. And I watched at the senior bowl and and only saw him in a controlled environment. He was good. He was was really good. good. But I think that Cole Strange, I think he went up that high. A, a lot of team, people thought it was an over uh, draft by the Patriots. And B, uh, I think a lot of it was the intelligence factor, the intangibles, which I, I can't speak to other than hearsay uh, with these guys. So I think mid-second round is possible uh, mm-hmm. for John Michael Schmitz. If not him. But you're going to have to get up. From where you are right now. Mm-hmm. Now, if you get a second round for Sutton, I think that's within range. Uh, the other guy I do want to throw out here in this, uh, if you're talking drafting center prospects, is uh, Joe Joe Tipman from Wisconsin. He is considered to be, I know a lot of people actually have him over John Michael Schmitz in this draft cycle uh, from Wisconsin. Really good run blocker, uh, great, at the, great at the point of attack, uh, ascending player younger uh, than John Michael Schmitz as well, who I believe is 24, 25. He's older 
uh, for a prospect, uh, John Michael Schmitz is. So there's going to be a center available for the Broncos if they choose to go that direction uh, with one of their early picks. All those Big Ten guys. Savage Boy Kev coming on Twitch says Broncos still have $22 million in cap, and that's flexible. I'm telling you. I said it on the pod yesterday. The final two signings are going to be Chauncey Gardner-Johnson and Hunt. Who- Hunt. Hunt. Oh, Kareem Hunt. Yeah, Hunt. I'm like, okay, uh, is he an Asian kicker? Um, <laughs> uh, we're all set. I can't. So, uh, and I'm, you know, this, I'm a huge fan of Young Way Koo. I, I yeah. meant that honestly. Yeah. <laughs> I just didn't know who he was. Um, and we're all set. Can't wait. Uh, all set, relative, you know, but yes. Oh, God, we've said it so many times and, and to repeat myself, but this is a good thing. It won't be hard to be better. <laughs> that you you're you're not as bad as your record indicated your roster isn't as bad as your record indicated last year you're a lot closer to being a playoff team than you were being a number one overall team which you were this year yep with some competency and being able i said you could fix the interior line for cheap well you went expensive you know what do we say i said six offensive line and originally nick i think i've knocked that down to five you've got two yeah. So even if you go three free agency, two or three draft, you've got two in already for for upgrades for for the for the uh, for the offensive line. And with Sean Payton in town, the Broncos, one of their first three picks is going to be an offensive lineman probably every year just because he comes from that Bill Parcells tree. And they care. They're pretty formulaic in uh, their team building philosophy, which uh, you saw it. I think it was Chris Sims uh, gave the Broncos said, they're what are they going to do in free agency? They're going to sign some big dudes uh, and Lo and behold, they sure did. They signed some beef up front. Mike coming in said, it says guaranteed money, reduced cap it on our signings. Not as knowledgeable on this as I need to be. Guaranteed money can be a number of things. It can be signing bonuses, which are prorated equally across the duration of the contract, or there can be guaranteed money in the base salary per season. So there's like little details. You'd want to see it, honestly, like in a, mm-hmm. a spreadsheet to really be able to dig into it. Uh, but it can be, yeah, guaranteed money. A lot of times a signing bonus or guaranteed roster bonus. And it's it's usually, there. there's both, usually the big guarantees, Mike, that, that lowers your initial cap hit is a signing bonus. So let's say, I'm going to try and do even numbers here. Let's say I sign you to a 10-year deal with $100 million guaranteed. I give you $90 million of that as a signing bonus, okay? So I just paid you $91 million right now. I gave you $91 million today. My cap hit on that is the 10 divided by the 90. So 9 million per year plus the 1 million. It's only a, it's only a $10 million cap hit across there. If I, the, where you run into problems is that guaranteed money accelerates to when you get rid of that player. So if I tried to cut somebody in year two, instead of that $11 million cap hit the next year, I would have just what I paid him minus the guaranteed money, which would be, $80 million. So I'd have an $80 million cap hit in year two if I tried to cut somebody. That's where dead cap comes in. The dead cap is the accelerated version of what you have already paid somebody in guaranteed money coming to coming home to roost. So that's where the dead cap comes in, which is why you cannot restructure Russell Wilson right now. <laughs> yeah, no, not happening. Amy Ellis, good morning, Broncos country. Good to see you, Amy. Got our per- guy, Dave Glassman. I saw Sting guy was in here earlier. Meant to say hello to Sting earlier. Got, got our guy, Chase Wellner, Mark Hoynak. Busy chat today, obviously, rightfully so. Uh, Seth also saying let's go with that Rangers uniform there. Uh, but can't say hello to everybody. Wish we could. Uh, but we appreciate you coming in here. Ma- Clayton here on, man, we were busy. Love what we're doing so far. Yeah, it's been uh, a lot of moves, man. You a lot of uh, a lot of meat on the bone to talk yesterday. Uh, Montana Altitude. Morning, Nick and Scott. Great day in the neighborhood. Uh, BA owners, BA coach equals winning organization. I want a competent center now. Hashtag MHH for life. And I saw some comments about Ben Jones in here and potentially being signed as well. Uh, he was the release from the Titans, had a pretty good, has had a pretty good career to date. I believe it was released with a medical waiver from the Titans. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Just, you know, like, why is Ben Jones still out there? Why haven't somebody made a move on him? Well, there's, uh, there's something going on, uh, with his health and medicals. So, uh, probably, Probably put a pin in that one for now. Just see what's going on. As far as the centers go, Ethan Pokasik signed a uh, a deal to return to the Brown or the yeah the Browns. Bozeman signed to return to the uh, Panthers. So I don't know what options there are at center uh, going forward. I'm sure the Broncos could probably find in somebody to compete there. Uh, but right now it just it screams NFL draft with one of their earlier picks to compete with Lloyd Cushenberry. 
you know, we were pretty critical of Lloyd Cushenberry last season. He struggled at the point of attack, but if you can solidify enough around him, maybe you can get by with him next year at center and then kind of kick the can down the road. Cause he's still cheap, you know, he's cheap and young. Yeah. Appreciate your Montana altitude coming in. Now here is a, a little debate point I'd like to have with all the free agent signings with the re signings. Um, you know, you and I have both talked with the DWIs, Ethan offline about this stuff. And Michael comes in, he says, great to have linebacker Alex Singleton back with the Broncos. I commented on him returning before I heard the numbers. So the numbers that he he came in on, let me see if I can look it up real quick. But my initial comments on him, you know, he was on a million dollars last year. Yeah. Was he is a good value signing. Um, but he has signed a three-year 18 million with nine guaranteed. So that basically becomes a two-year $12 million deal. He's on six a year now or so you know, in, in that neighborhood. What do you think about Alex Singleton coming back on six? Is that good value or is is this is this the right move to make? I think it's a little bit high in terms of the value. I'm happy to have him back because he's a really solid player and him and Jewel had pretty good chemistry last season. Uh, I want to see what the guarantees look like, how it's spread out over the contract. You know, we just talked about it. Mm -hmm. What is it? Nine million guaranteed over three years. So three million across every single year of that plus whatever the base is i'm yeah, sure it'll be spot, lower spot rack has it as a 3.3 cap hit this year and a 7.3 cap hit next year with a six million dollar dead cap and then what about the year after? like i said it's a two-year deal and then it's a 7.3 with a one dead cap yep. in year three so it's a it's a two-year deal with a club option yep um you know unless you don't mind eating all of the the dead cap money then you can then then there are no year deals um, but it's basically a two-year deal. I thought that was high. I did. I said I was like he, I could, I could almost triple his money by giving him three. Instead, you went six. Now I don't have any doubt he was getting offers for three to five out there on the open market. I, I fully believe yeah. that. But did yeah. you need to go to six to bring back Alex Singleton? And now are you done at linebacker if Jonas Griffith is healthy, Josie Jewell, and Alex Singleton as your three inside guys? You are done at linebacker in free agency, in my opinion, other than maybe like a special teams ace. That is if he's starting on the defense, you're in freaking trouble. Uh, but as far as the draft goes, Josie Jewell only has one year left of his contract and he's had injury issues. There's no reason that in the draft with where the Broncos are picking right now, that if the linebacker, if a linebacker is the best player on their board, they don't go that route. Uh, let's say like Jack Campbell falls to pick 67, 68 or whatever. Uh, Sure. Take him swing away. You know, then you'll figure out the rotation there. Just get good players, especially with where you're picking. I wouldn't overthink positional value too much. It's not like we're talking about the top 10 and taking a guard in the top 10. We're talking, you know, early, <laughs> early uh, round three. So I wouldn't say the linebacker position is done, but uh, you can, I think you can feel solid for next season. I know that uh, Ethan DD by guys, isn't going to like that or agree with that. Cause he's looking for a, a demigod kind of linebacker. But uh, I mean, you know, the, I think that uh, you're you're solid there next season, and I think we've seen the Broncos prove over the last few seasons that you can field a pretty damn good defense without spending big money on the linebacker position or heavy resources on the linebacker position. To your first point, though, I think it is a little bit of an overpay mm -hmm. uh, for him personally. I thought that you could get him for about, about a million dollars less per season than that. I would have been more comfortable with about five, and if that – I think five probably would have been my line. And after that, I would have gone to the market thinking I could find somebody out there. Yeah. Uh, but – Again, he had great chemistry here with Jewel last year's season. It's not my money. Also, it's a deal that it's really a two-year contract. So he's mm -hmm. just after if he doesn't work out, you can move on from him pretty cheaply after 2024. So it's not it's not a terrible. Uh, I don't think the risk on it is horrible. Yeah, I don't think it's a a bad deal. It's just not one that I'd be over the moon about. You know, if you said two years at six, okay, I'm yeah, okay, he's he's a great value signing. Uh, but that was a little high for me and. Mm -hmm. When you and I first started doing this, there was a lot of complaints about Melvin Gordon's contract, but the, the Denver Broncos had a ton of open cap space. So my question was always, what, who is Melvin Gordon's contract keeping you from signing? Who, who didn't you get because of Melvin Gordon's contract? And the answer was nobody. You had money available. You just chose not to spend it. This is, this is a little different. You know, if I've got six in the singleton instead of two and a half, Three and a half million dollars buys you a good center. It buys you a good offensive line. It can get you another linebacker, you know, in, in some of those places. It gets you a Mike Purcell, another good interior lineman for the rotation. So that one, 
is a, we'll see how it all shakes out at the end, but that was a little bit of an overpay for me. Um, string guy says, Scott, where do we stand on cap space after yesterday? Officially you're about neutral. Um, you won't finish that way. So you'll, you'll, if you need to go out and get a guy, I think, uh, I think Bryce, I don't know if you're, if you're Bryce string guy, Bryce had texted me this morning, uh, hit me up on Twitter and said something about going after this guy. Is it possible? I'm like, if you want to get a guy, you can get a guy and work out the finances later. I mean, the, the, if you go to cap tracker, the new Orleans saints were sitting, let's see cap tracker. They've changed it a little bit estimated. They've, they've made some moves to now they're at $500,000 over the cap. The Minnesota Vikings are 10 million under and just signed a guy for 13 million. If you want to get a guy, you, 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 you can, you can, you can make it work. You'll do some, uh, do some different stuff, uh, to make it happen. You can finagle the cap when you got cash on hand. Uh, Gary Palmer at 10 bucks coming in. Yella, appreciate you. He says, good morning, Nick and Scott. What space do we have left? There we go. <laughs> Can we afford a running back in his center? MHH for life and buck him with a B, you two. Um, yes, you can. You can yeah. You can still make moves. There are plenty of moves to still be uh, made. Yeah. Thanks, Gary, for so much the $10. Let's got BK coming in with five. With a signing we haven't talked about yet. We haven't even gotten to everybody uh, yet, Scott. But uh, Man Hurts, tight end from Jacksonville. BK says, glad we signed Man Hurts. A good blocking tight end. Can't wait to see us run more next season. Yeah, he's a prototypical Y. And uh, last season, we had hope that uh, Eric Tomlinson would be that guy. He was up and down there in that prototypical Y. But Man Hurts, better blocker on tape uh, than... I just love the name. I mean, come I know, on. Right? It's, I mean, it's a perfect blocking tight end name, right? I, blocking tight end. I, this by better be mean. I tell you, <laughs> man hurts. You know, yeah, but better than if, you know, Lily. My 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 guard's name is Lily. You know, this guy's name is Man Hurts. I no, love yeah, it. He makes me very, smile. German angry name. Uh, you know, <laughs> sounds like a bouncer or something, and we're one of those like, you know, rough guys in a James Bond movie. But uh, Man Hurts, yeah. Good wide tight end. Uh, Broncos are going to be able to bring him in and run the football with him, hopefully dictate opposing personnel because he's a good enough blocker. And then, hey, if you get him in the right package, then you can hit them with a with a play action over the top. But I think the Broncos signed him for a two-year, $12 million deal. Somebody can correct me on that one. That's off the top of my head. Uh, afraid to have too many tabs open. Otherwise, this uh, computer will you know curse at me. But uh, I, I love the man hurt signing for the Broncos. Get another tight end in there. I wouldn't rule... Again, this... With where the Broncos are at right now, and we can talk about it before we get out of here, but if they've done such a thorough job in free agency on the front end that like literally any direction they go in the draft position-wise makes sense. That's really a simple draft for me with where they're at. Just get good players and trust your board. If it's a tight end and what is considered to be the best tight end draft class in a decade, sure, awesome. Hallelujah, we got another weapon in there that makes sense. Uh, you can play off with Dulcich. If it's a wide receiver, cool. Center, yes, linebacker, it, don't even doesn't matter to me. Get good players in here. We've talked about it before with Sean Payton. And yes, Drew Brees threw for a ton of yards. His ability to throw for a ton of yards was dictated by a strong running game and passing offense to the running backs. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, getting on there. And David Kilgore comes in again. Appreciate you, David. He says, what do you think of the Stidham acquisition? I think it makes a lot of sense. What was he? Five million per, I think. That is good backup money. That is someone that if you need to make a change at quarterback, you can. If you feel good. I mean, God bless Brett Rippon, but you know, since I've been here for two years, there was never any thoughts of him becoming a starter one day or could be a starter or could be anything other than a clipboard holder. You don't want him as your quarterback two. You want him as your quarterback three and then your quarterback's coach. So that doesn't necessarily do anything for Brett Rippon for me in his career path. This upgrades. If Russell Wilson has a shoulder injury or a hamstring injury or something that is, is bothering him, sit him. Let him get healthy. I can bring Stedham in for a, a game or two and be very competent at the position. I think it's a great move and one that we had predicted that would happen to get a good backup quarterback, whether it's Taylor Heineke, who signed with the Falcons and got twice what Stidham did in money. He got 10 million per Jacoby Brissett wasn't for me. I think he played his way into a starters role. So yeah. I think he's going to get 15 and he's going to get a chance to start somewhere. So Stidham coming in experience with starting good quarterback. I think it's a great move, David. Yeah. Stidham just not to go too down the, uh, 
personal anecdote side of this, but uh, I had a chance back in 2019. I drove down from Iowa City to Columbia, Missouri to uh, take in the Missouri Pro Day because I had it on good information that the Broncos were interested in one Drew Locke and uh, went and took in Drew Locke's Pro Day down there in Missouri. And I bumped into Jordan Palmer. You guys probably know him as a quarterback guru. We've trained uh, Josh Allen, a number of quarterbacks coming through, the younger brother of uh, Carson Palmer as well. has done a lot of good stuff out there. And I was talking to him about, you know, Drew Locke. And then the conversation of uh, Jarrett Stidham came up because I remember hearing conversation that Jarrett Stidham had one of the best pro days to ever <laughs> anybody had ever seen. People were going nuts for Jarrett Stidham's pro day. And one thing Stidham has in spades that Rippon just doesn't have is God-given arm talent. Stidham's release, the way he can t- put the velocity on the football, the touch on the football is really good. It's a reason that the NFL people in the NFL have been infatuated with Stidham for since he was in Baylor, uh, just because of the natural arm talent, you know, if you can harness that, that is a special NFL arm. Uh, so, I mean, maybe not special, but a good NFL arm. Uh, so we saw it last year. He had an unbelievable game with the Raiders week 16 against the 49ers where he threw for like 350 yards and three touched against the, yeah, the 49ers are the best defense in football last season. So there's tools there and he's only 26 years old still. I think this might be not only a backup, but it's a non-threatening signing to Russell Wilson where there's still, tangible physical gifts and upside there that maybe Sean Payton is calling a shot. And something also that is interesting is that Davis Webb uh, Broncos new quarterback coach has a relationship with Jarrett Stidham as well, dating back to when Stidham was a high level recruit and uh, coming up through the they system, both, going, out of Texas. both in Texas. Yep. Yeah. They're both out of Texas. I was, I was still in the recruiting game back at the time and Stidham, I think ended up at A&M before going to Auburn. I think he went um, to Baylor. Did he go to Baylor? I thought, I thought he was Baylor and then dropped out because the uh, the Art oh, Bryles stuff. I thought Stidham was originally committed to AM. Maybe he was. I just know he ended up at Auburn. Either way, yes. Uh, you can look that up. While I say hello to Deanna Hendry coming in uh, early for us this morning, he says good morning, Nick and Scott. Actually, it's a Scott and Nick. I always give Nick top billing. Super happy with the new player sign. Hopefully, we can pick up a great center. Super stoked. I, I agree. Um, there's still plenty of. I don't, I don't want to say work to do because that's not the right thing. There's still plenty of opportunity to go out and get there, get get you an, an upgrade at center, and let Cushenberry compete for that spot. Glasgow's gone. You've got and you've got Wattenberg as a possibility. So you've got two guys you're not overly comfortable with. Uh, I know if I'm Sean Payton coming in, I've got no ties to these guys. I've got no bias saying, okay, well we saw what he could be and we drafted him. And this is what he went. No, uh, uh-uh. uh, these guys haven't been good enough. I need better. One of you two is going to get to be a backup, maybe. So I think there is, Deanna, I still think there's plenty of opportunity to go and get a center. And as Nick and I were talking about, you can get an upgraded center. One of the reasons why is because the bar is so low. The center play has been so bad the last two years. You can get a rookie center to be an upgrade over what you had. Would he be a plus starter? Probably not right away. Maybe, probably not right away. But he can be an improvement Keep getting better. That's all I've ever asked of anybody I work with, my children, my teams. Just keep improving. I can get better at center, no doubt in my mind. Yeah, I I agree with you. And I think that, again, because you've improved around him so much, uh, the center spot, that if you went with Lloyd Cushenberry for one more year, I think the last year of his rookie contract, uh, you could keep your head above water there. Uh, Having Ben Powers, who's so stout at the point of attack, you know, not letting that leakage go. Quinn Miners, year three, who's been an ascending player, uh, been voted by Pro Football Focus or nominated by Pro Football Focus as the breakout player of the year for the Broncos next season. Uh, so you have options there. Just a lot of uh, solid players. Um, but uh, Deanna, thank you so much. $50. Incredible. Yeah. We appreciate you. Real um, quick, Nick. Uh, I'm noticing all of the n- n- new viewers that we have coming in because Dustin is obviously new if he doesn't know that you're an Iowa guy. He's new. So welcome. Appreciate you being here. Just a reminder, hit that subscribe button. Uh, if, if you, this is the first time coming in, you can follow Nick and I on, on Twitter, you know, just to know when we're, when we're going to be on, uh, but you can hit that subscribe button, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, uh, we've got about 30 minutes left or so on the show. So we still have plenty of time here, but lots of views. We're up over 400 on a Monday, which is, I mean, on a, on a morning, which is really good. And, uh, yes, Dustin, he's in Seattle, but he is a big Iowa guy. Can't shut up, shut up about it. Honestly. Yeah, it's uh, everybody. Oh, Nick's going to go into an anecdote about the Hawkeyes or make a joke about their offense. But I'm in Seattle these days, but uh, was in Iowa City for grad school and in from the Quad Cities originally. So I'm a I'm a Midwestern guy born and raised on the Mississippi. 
Uh, Kevin seven, four ninety nine saying really happy with the signings. And I'm now wishing for a defensive back and another offensive lineman for insur insurance. How realistic is Chauncey Gardner Johnson jr. Uh, I don't know if there is a junior. I think it might be just uh card Chauncey Gardner Johnson, but I think it's very possible. Uh, the Broncos are looking for another safety out there. We've been very impressed with uh Caden Stearns flashes out there, but you are, I don't think there's been enough substance to go into next season without having a little bit insurance at the position. So bringing in Chauncey Gardner Johnson, who's a versatile player can also play some uh, slot as well. Did a really good job. There has some familiarity with uh, Sean Payton was drafted from Florida to that saints team. A uh, good player there then was traded last season to the Eagles. Uh, so he's really an interesting one. And if the Broncos do bring him in, that'd be a good signing. They still have 22 million. I believe in cap space this season because the Broncos don't have a lot of early draft picks or volume of draft picks. They don't have to uh, hoard a bunch for a draft class coming up here as well. And something just from an accounting perspective, the Broncos, why are they setting up all these contracts where they're short year one and then heavier down the road it gives you options in the immediacy, but guess what? You're going to earmark some of that money that is the cap space right now to roll over. So that way that next season, while you let's say a contracts for this guy, one year is 5 million. The next year it's 15 million, but you roll over five. Essentially you marked it as a 10 million per contract. A lot of teams do that at accounting wise. You're also to me saying these are guys we want to build, build around in the future, knowing that the old guard, a lot of those contracts can come off the books next year. Yes. You know, so I might be, I might be a little higher on McGlinchey. I might be a little higher on, on powers, man. I mean, I think you went with all name guys. I got powers and man hurts. Okay. Now we're talking. I don't want to hear about being bullied anymore. You can, if you're a little higher in year two or year three, that's because there's some contracts that could come up with Randy Gregory. He's, you know, Sutton, Patrick, also Wilson, Bowles, all Bowles, all of those guys uh, are, are contracts that could change drastically after this season. Uh, appreciate you coming in, Kevin. Um, Let's uh let's take the other side of this because I have seen some of the discussions on this. We gave 85 million to the this is Mayola 210. I've seen some some naysayers in the in the chat comments on not not necessarily in here, but on uh after the fact when I go and read through them. Um we we gave 85 million to the 15th 25 ranked tackle in the league. Laugh out loud. All these are overpaid. Ownership is throwing money around to say we want to fix it. Um you almost always overpay in free agency. It's the way it is. Uh, you 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 almost always overpay. You you have to pay more than what someone else wasn't willing to pay. Draymond Jones, the Broncos didn't think he was worth seventeen a year, so to speak. Seattle had to pay that to get him because he's on the open market. It's beneficial to the player. You almost always overpay. How many players? I was trying to think. How many players started at right tackle last year? For it was it it was at least four. Last year it was Turner. It was, was it Fleming? Fleming did a lot. Anderson? Did Anderson start ever there? Or was I thought he, just... he had a game at right tackle and then got moved and pulled quickly. And then like Bailey, didn't he get some, didn't he, didn't he take some snaps at right tackle? I think Bailey took some snaps. I think Anderson was in preseason. I don't think it happened in the regular season. Okay. For him, but... Well, it, there, I would be surprised if I'm not forgetting somebody. All those guys combined, Fleming was probably the best of the bunch, but not necessarily good. And if, if he can fit your scheme for what you're doing, then 15 to be done with that position for the next five years, or, you know, it was, it was 17 million or so, it's probably worth it. It's probably yeah. worth it. And, and if you get guys in free agency, you probably overpaid on yeah, the market I... value. But what are they worth to your team? I had this discussion yesterday. And, and it was hard to, it was hard to, put it in context in a chat because you know what costs your team missing missing costs your team russell wilson playing badly costs your team not yeah. money dalton reiser and lloyd and cushionberry were cheap they were maybe three and a half four million combined last year but what did they cost what did they actually cost your team i won't say a season but competency up the middle of your line, which really hurts your offense, which really hurts your season. That's what it costs to fix a problem. This is cheap. Yeah. And just getting in McGlinchey himself, we haven't talked about him. He's probably the marquee signing of the Broncos of this free agency cycle. And he's the one that scares me the most. Uh, I'll be honest. They gave him, I believe the second most guaranteed money for an offensive tackle ever. 
Uh, his contract comes out at, I believe, tied 13th in uh, average allotted value at 17.5 per year. Uh, and that's good open market tackle money. Uh, obviously, by the time, let's say two years from now, that'll probably be closer to 20th, 25th. Uh, but I think that this is one contract that I think the one that I'm concerned about, like I said, uh, he not played well of the last few seasons uh, so we'll see how it plays out we'll get into it too about as my computer catches up <laughs> yeah as uh you know again nobody nobody you're saying this is a sure thing you know there there isn't one and your 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 name's a little maola um i'm not sure what your your name is <laughs> nobody's saying it's a sure thing but i i should be happy that you're investing in a good player at right tackle when you haven't done so you've been putting band-aids on it for so long that you've got a good one especially run blocking, mobility, all those type of things that Sean Payton wants to do. You know, I, I like to say all the time, you know, scheme shmeem, but it matters more to me in free agency than it does in draft because I need somebody to play right now. I, I, I'm not trying to mold a, a raw talent into something. I need, a, I need a free agent to come in and be an impact guy right away. And who's always impacting our show is Michaela Israel. She said, I appreciate y'all. It's great to have the show in the MHH community to talk news with. Thank you for being here. Michaela wanted to say again, Michaela came in with a super chat to uh, let us know some, some news yesterday. I can't remember which one. Well, there was so much news going on. It was the Zach Allen news. So we don't always, when we're live, we don't always see it. And that you are a trusted member of the community. Come in with a super to keep us informed like that. Very helpful. Thank you so much. Yeah, really do appreciate it. Mikhail always coming in. We always love hearing from you. Andre F saying, missed some of you guys' shows uh, live, so missed you guys. What do you think about McGlinchey's penalty issue and his pass blocking? Major concern there? Yeah, uh, some penalty issues. Also, I was talking with uh, Brandon Thorne, uh, following some Brandon Thorne stuff, and he was talking about you know McGlinchey, some concerns there. Thought that uh, Andrew Wiley was a similar tiered player. I think uh, Nate Tice also mentioned as such, and the Broncos paid a massive premium on McGlinchey, who maybe you could have gone a direction and gotten a similar player for, you know, 75% of the price. McGlinchey's lost weight over the last few seasons. He's lost a little bit of mobility. Uh, he's played games, but he's been dealing with injuries. That looks like it zapped a little bit of the athleticism as well. So this is a concerning, this is the big one that I'm like, I mean, I'm happy the Broncos brought in and paid some money uh, for that right tackle spot to stabilize it. But I'm worried about the production per dollar uh, of this one compared to the other signings. You paid big for him. Uh, you had to out outspend the Bears, who backed off on that, who had a lot of money to go out there and uh, bring in him if they wanted to. Uh, so we'll see what happens. I'm curious if this is something where uh, Sean Payton really liked McGlinchey coming out of Notre Dame and identified him early in the free. I mean, I know that we had information come out that early in the team building meetings period for the Broncos, when he first came in, they identified as Mike McGlinchey as one of their number one targets. Uh, so I'm curious how much of that is based on the top 10 draft pick evaluation versus mm -hmm. what he was this last season. I think he's going to be fine, but I think that he's more, I think he's more of a $14 million per year kind of guy versus a 17.5 with those guarantees. So I, I'm a little bit concerned about this one, but also you know, you're paying for a better and improvement at right tackle over the next three seasons. So yeah, that's, and, a, and, that's a good, and how is this, how have his, his durability issues been? Cause frankly, uh, Andre Amaola, we asked yesterday before all this broke, you know, Nick, who would you rather have at right tackle? And, you know, he said McGarry would, would have been his number one choice. So for cheaper than yeah. what I thought McGlinchey was going to get. Yeah. yeah. So we'll, we'll see, you know, it, it, it's the, the phrase trust the coaches just annoys the hell out of me. I trust the coaches to do what they think is right. Mm -hmm. I don't trust them to get it right. That's blind faith, which I'm not real high on. I don't have a whole lot of that. It's a, I think Nick and I both have ancestors from Missouri. It's the show me. So I, if they, I think they got their guy. Now we'll see if they got it right. That's what hindsight will be able to tell us. Yep. That it out. Little Kev coming in, 499, saying I think the Broncos are going to use Jarrett Stidham like Sean Payton used Taysom Hill. Different kind of quarterback. I think Jarrett Stidham is a lot more like a Jameis Winston uh, where you got a bigger like profile. Not that big, is he? I thought he was like 6'3". I mean, just as far as the not as heavy, I mean. Oh, not as, no, he's not as bulky. Uh, but I don't see him using him as a fullback, you know, up back, you know, power pushing pocket yeah, kind of guy. He's 6'3", 214. He's lean. 
but the arm talent and the vertical pass game yeah. in the drop back game is what right. I, but I see with Winston. Very much not like Taysom Hill. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. Not like Taysom. Taysom Hill is Tim Tebow. Taysom Hill, Tim Tebow should have had, if he wasn't already just beat to hell, Tim Tebow should have had the Taysom Hill career. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, uh, Scott, I'm going to give you a chance. So, McGlinchey is the one that uh, scares me a bit. I think the Broncos uh, paid premium for him, and rightful, rightfully so. They identified him as a guy that they wanted. Uh, but I do want uh, – I just want to put my name out there. that That's the one that scares me the most right now, especially because you don't have many avenues of getting out of this deal. He is the Broncos' right tackle mm -hmm. for the next three seasons. His cap gets pretty big after the season. I am wondering what it means for the Broncos at left tackle. Going forward, uh, I'm curious if that you know big expenditure bump in 2024 means curtains for Garrett Bowles and his contract in Denver. Uh, but uh, just thoughts on Mike McGlinchey. Obviously, uh, there's the really terrible clip out there of Micah Parsons sending him into outer space in the playoff game last season, where he was you know 300 pound guy, looks like four feet off the ground horizontally, um, which is not a good look. But uh, again, I think McGlin I'm fine with McGlinchey signing, but I think they probably overpaid to get that guy. Uh, mm -hmm. compared to other options out there that probably could have been, you know, 75% of the player for 50% of the cost. Yeah. Five years with 50 million guaranteed, you know, obviously that's not an $87 million contract any more than what was Randy Gregory's, you know, 60 million. No, that was a two year, $34 million deal. This one is more like a three year, $51 million deal. So you're, you're tied to him for a little bit. Um, Micah Parsons has made several people look bad. <laughs> you know, that happens. You're taking 60 offensive snaps. If you look bad on one of them, you're going to be okay. Uh, if that's the one they're going to pull, you're, you're going to be okay. Um, you know, so I, and I, I haven't watched him, and I, I, I admitted to this yesterday, I haven't watched him nearly as much as I've watched McGarry to let you know exactly what you'd be getting. Um, but again, we talked early. There were three guys that – that could be tier one targets to fix the right tackle position for the Denver Broncos. And you got your first choice. You know, now we'll see, like I said, trust the coaches to do what they think is best and then hope that they got it right. Yeah. And just some hindsight on uh, this, you know, kind of combing over the right tackle spot uh, for the Broncos. McGlinchey was probably my least of the big three um, that were the, I viewed as right tackles. In this, I thought that McGarry was going to get the smallest contract of the the three big ones. And uh, the one that I wanted the most was the one that now is going to be going over the Chiefs for an $80 million, $60 million guaranteed contract to play left tackle. Uh, so I guess that the evaluation of Juwan Taylor as an upside player, we talked about it yesterday, Scott, about Juwan Taylor's poor uh, PFF grade. I'm like, eh, I thought he looked pretty damn good and uh, fluid and everything you could possibly want on tape, but we'll see what the market dictates what these guys are worth. But he's now the Chiefs left tackle. It also makes you wonder what the hell uh, Orlando Brown wants if paying $20 million per year for uh, Jawan Taylor is uh, considered a value compared to whatever Orlando Brown is looking for at left tackle. But uh, we'll see. Uh, McGlinchey is the one I'm the most concerned about. I've, if we're grading the picks right now, I think it's a C signing for the Broncos because uh, it's, a, it's a big need. It's one that you offer some stability, but you paid pre, uh, dearly for it. And for a player who hasn't missed too many games, he has been playing with injury. And I think that's, he hasn't looked the same when he's been dealing with those injuries. It's not a Juwan um, James level signing, but just one that I'm like a eh, little, little concerned. I'll come back to this. Um, and we'll talk about my favorite signing of the bunch. I couldn't pass this one up. Jesse Hillborn says Tebow was a great leader, not really a great football player, but a great leader for sure. Ooh, ouch. Uh, I just could not, I could disagree more because he was a great leader and he was a heart, but Tim Tebow was a fantastic football player i mean he's arguably the greatest player to ever walk through the sec arguably just look at his numbers at florida passing rushing breaking herschel walker's touchdown record he is a fantastic football player he just wasn't meant to be an nfl quarterback that's yeah. all uh when he was when he was coming out i actually compared his numbers to dallas clark at the time so this is before Taysom hill very similar so he should have been an h-back dallas clark was a first round draft pick and i was on nfl network saying Tim Tebow won't be. Thanks, Josh McDaniels. Um, but Tim Tebow was a fantastic football player. Fantastic. One of the best to ever play in college football. Yep. And, and my got favorite of the signings, Nick, was Zach Allen. And then going back, 
uh, a little callback on this one was I wanted Andrew Wiley last year, if you'll remember at yes, right tackle, talking about, you know, he was cheap. He was a 17 game starter for a good team in the Kansas City Chiefs. You bring him in and offer him three or four. I don't think he made that much more with the Chiefs and he was a free agent last year. And now, oh yeah, hey, this Andrew Wiley guy, he ends up getting three times that on the open market the second time. Yep. So, you know, I, a little hindsight there. I thought Andrew Wiley would have been a good signing last year. He would have um, been. And like I said, if you miss on guys, if if you miss on guys, it gets expensive to correct mistakes. So going back to, okay, we took a shot with Billy Turner. We took a shot with Tom Compton. We, we band-aided this guy and this guy and this guy. None of them worked. Okay, well, it's going to get expensive to make up for that that miss. You're so, paying for you're paying a premium for a higher floor and a more known quantity. Uh, it is going to be kind of funny to see what uh, McGlinchey at his almost six foot nine uh, height looks like on that offensive line with Russell Wilson behind him. But Sean Payton identified him as a guy that he wanted. Let's hope that he can maximize him. And maybe McGlinchey um, is going to be better in a more gap oriented scheme versus the outside zone uh, that was obviously very. Uh, important in San Francisco underneath Cal Shanahan. We'll see. They obviously identified him as number one. We hope that that's the uh, the case uh, for them. And also get Colin Wood saying, after John James, we're not afraid to throw money away at the right tackle. Yeah, the Broncos are finally out of that uh, right tackle dead cap hit for John James. So uh, now they have some money to throw on the right tackle again. If he, he, I didn't actually look. I forgot to look. What if his dead cap hit was last year? It was like you know ten million or something. Yep. Well, hell, you're only costing an extra five million at right tackle. Yeah. Bargain. Yeah, right. You can say the same thing about Ben Powers. Oh, you've saved 11 million on uh, Graham Glasgow, and that's only 2 million more for uh, Ben Powers on there. So a bargain as well. Uh, uh, the last well, Dalton was cheap last year. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. He was, he was still cheap last year. And, and like I said, I would have offered Dalton two and a half. Um, I'm very curious to see what he ends up signing for. And people are like two and a half, you know, he's worth, you know, that's an insult. That's, that's middle tier money. If I go and look at the, the average value of contracts, it's like 16th for guards mm -hmm. it's it's right there or maybe it was like 30 out of 60 but it's right in the middle i'm thinking yeah. of one position out of like 60 starting guards it was like 30th it was right in the middle in there at, at two and a half million dollars so we'll yep. see what he ends up signing and and i actually read this uh when i read this colin the first time after Jawan james we're afraid of throwing money away on a right tackle little little shell shock there a little you know a little uh post PTSD on that. I get it for sure. Yeah. So really interesting. Um, we got to start wrapping it up here. We're already at uh seven 30. So not too much time left here. Probably another five minutes or so. Uh, Zach Allen signing. Somebody said, talk about Zach Allen, uh, had a really phenomenal year last year for the Cardinals, still an ascending player, uh, inside outside pass rusher somebody that this Broncos team really has lacked, uh, out there, uh, Moving on from Bradley Chubb, somebody who in base package can play that, you know, seven technique hand in the dirt and then reduce inside to, you know, five technique, four eye, three technique, even in different sub packages, which then let's say if you like compare, combine him and Nick Benito as an edge rusher, it's a perfect pairing because at Benito, you don't have to worry about him ever playing edge and setting it on first and second down or any rundowns. You can just play him in pure pass rushing situations with Alan, Alan then off the field or reducing inside. Allen had a lot of tackles for loss last season. He's got a vicious uh, swim move to get in the backfield and uh, he plays with for, for his frame and body type, you know, great leverage ability to get in the backfield. I think this is a great signing. Somebody that this Broncos team, a body type and a skill set this front desperately needed, especially if it's going to be one that is as blitz heavy as they were last season. It's probably going to be slightly different. Not, not as much penny front more. I would believe probably four two five front, but still uh, there's going to be a lot of different roles and uh, usages for a player that is, uh, heavy edge, light interior pass rusher like a Zach Allen. Uh, I think he's going to be a big get for this team. I think that Draymond Jones is slightly better as a pass rusher, but I think Allen's a slightly better as a run defender. So uh, probably the market is about right for both of those guys, I think. Uh, but a great get for the Broncos and the ability to still bring in Allen in spite of uh, paying all that money for a top guard and a top tackle. And this is uh, kudos. You know, they're not playing the comp big game. They're not slow playing it with Russell Wilson. Uh, they're going for it. And Alan, I agree with you, Scott, completely. My favorite signing, again, jokes. Scott and Nick like the defensive lineman. Oh, man, what a shock. Who could have seen that coming? Uh, <laughs> but uh, just great signing for them. And also, sounds like an A-plus leader person that the Broncos are going to really love. And fun tidbit. Uh, sorry that I'm on a little rant here now, Scott. But hey, well, our one, computer's keeping up. You go. <laughs> for one season, um, at Boston College, Justin Simmons and Zach Allen played together. 
uh, out there for the, uh, the golden Eagles. So kind of fun seeing those two uh, guys from Boston linked back up in Denver here. Keith appreciate the stars asking about Zach Allen, um, there you go. six foot four, 280 pounds. He will start the season at 25 years old in his fifth year. This guy's just scratching the surface, man. Uh, um, this was, you, you see these guys, they get overlooked for one reason or another, this Boston college kid. And, and then he goes out and he's just productive. Uh, and and the, the, the size of him at the edge is something you've been missing so much. You know, I think you've been okay up the middle, but maybe your best edge defender, Nick, if, uh, if <laughs> your best edge defender against a run may have been K1 Williams uh, out of the slot corner position. So um, I, I thought this was going to be, I, I mentioned to about two weeks ago, the link started happening to Nick. Uh, he gave me some of the things of why not maybe, but you look at the size, the production, the age, I'm very excited to watch him play as a Denver Bronco. Yeah, without a doubt. And uh, Scott, now that we're through day one of free agency, um, what do you think about the Broncos biggest remaining needs? What, what are you looking for here uh, from a free agency perspective and DWI guys coming in $50 uh, tier two free agency signings? No linebackers listed here from Ethan, surprisingly, but running back and defensive back, question mark. Uh, so, you know, biggest needs coming out of here, for me, it would still be center. Of uh, I, I've, I've got to make an improvement at the center position, and I promise you it will happen. Uh, if Lloyd Cushenberry ends up the starting center for the Denver Broncos next year, it's because he beat out somebody that was brought in to compete with him. There will be another body to come in and do it. So I'm not saying Lloyd Cushenberry won't start. I'm going to say he's going to get competition. And the guy that they bring in should be the favorite to start. If Cushenberry wins that position, good for him. That's good for the Denver Broncos. Um, Tier 2 free agent signings running back, yes. Uh, Nick talked a little bit about that earlier. There will be, you know, is Kareem Hunt a possibility? You've got the money to do that for sure. Uh, You know, Latavius Murray is still sitting out there as a break glass in case of, as Nick likes to say, and I think that's funny. Uh, he played very well last year and could be a a third option. The special teams thing, if he's not a contributor on special team, makes you a little bit nervous. Uh, I think Mike Boone signed away. Uh, I think, Ethan, you told me that yesterday. Mike Boone signed with the Vikings or Bears Houston. or somebody. I don't even Texans. remember who it was. Texans or something. I'm like, man, that, got, that guy got paid a lot to not have to do a whole lot. Great job if you can get it. Um you know, so that wasn't a great contract for the Denver Broncos and, and it was potential unfulfilled. Maybe defensive back. Yes. Yes. You don't have Ronald Darby there. Now I'm not ruling out the possibility of bringing Ronald Darby back on a, on a lower contract. Um, who would they, they did that with hunt last year. I mean, with Kareem, not Kareem hunt, Kareem Jackson last year, uh, was Josie jewel, a guy they did that with last year. Also let him get signed pretty early. Agency? I think he signed pretty early in free okay, agency. But they let Kareem Hunt and they let uh, Melvin Gordon was a guy that they let do that. Go on out. Hmm. Go on out. Maybe maybe we come, maybe come back. This is what we've got on the table for you. Go shop it. We'd love yeah. to have you back at this for this possibility uh, there too. And you can I never agree. have enough corners. Uh, there was a report this morning when I was trolling around uh, trying to get everything set up, uh, brewing my coffee, that I saw the Broncos – had been linked to uh, another report came out with uh, David Montgomery linked to the Broncos. Obviously Broncos running back coach uh, recruited and coached David Montgomery at Iowa state, just like he recruited and coached Kareem hunt at Toledo. So keep an eye on David Montgomery. The Falcons were also listed in that uh, potential landing spot for David Montgomery. So uh, watch out for that. We'll see what happens there. Um, and then also a name that we haven't talked about once on here, but maybe makes some sense. Uh, Shelby Harris uh, released from the Seahawks. Good job. He had some good years in Denver. I think he still might own his house in Denver. I don't think he's going to be looking for a massive contract. If the Broncos are losing Draymond Jones and Deshaun Williams, they bring in Zach Allen. There's still room for a defensive line on here. So uh, I think that there's a possibility that you could see the Broncos make an offer uh, for Shelby Harris as well. You can never have enough defensive line up front. Maybe this makes Mike Purcell more expendable. You don't have a role for that pure nose. You're looking for a little bit more one technique, three technique with some versatility. You can pair DJ, Zach Allen, Shelby Harris uh, together, and that gives you a different kind of room with more pass rush ability. So somebody mentioned Shelby Harris in the chat. You guys are killing it today in the chat, so I can't see everything while trying to talk with Scott as well. But uh, yeah, that's one that uh, I think also is one that you want to keep, uh, keep an eye on. If we're going back to culture, though, Shelby Harris might be off the board. You know, and I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I'm just saying we need a change. 
could be could be part of it. But you know, he'll be 32 this year. Um, maybe you were missing him. Yep. Maybe that would could be a good thing. I, I would think that Vance Joseph would have some say in that. I, I don't think Vance Joseph would have some say in that. He would anyway, but it would especially be important for bringing a guy like Shelby Harris back. But that's that's a decent shout, I think, because he was a cap casualty, which means he's already gotten paid on that contract. Mm -hmm. um, and he's he's out there. So someone to look for. Ethan, appreciate you for sure. Thank you, sir. And Michael Ranquillo coming in, just about ready to close us out here. We got just a couple more minutes left. It says, great show today. Nick and Scott on Broncos for breakfast. Go Broncos and buck them. And we're like at the peak numbers. They keep growing usually all the way through the end of the show. So just a reminder, hit that subscribe button. Uh, if, if you're new to us, welcome. Thank you for checking us out. And hopefully we we'll see you again. If you hit that subscribe button, you get an alert to know when we're coming back on and uh, love some of the new faces and some of the old faces who have come back to us today. Like Adam. Yes, Adam, I saw you on here. Adam Bumgartner uh, showing back up on uh, on Facebook for the first time in a while. Yeah, good to see all you guys. We're going to have to wrap it on up here. Broncos, really busy day yesterday. Six free agency signings. Ben Powers, Mike McGlinchey, uh, Zach Allen, uh, Man Hurts, the tight, tight end. Uh, obviously Alex Singleton back as well. And Jarrett Stidham, six big signings and the Broncos still have apparently 22 million in cap space uh, to play around with and maybe sign a few more people here. We'll see what they do. Defensive back, defensive line, uh, running back potentially still. And then after that, we'll get into free agency. We're going to let the dust settle a little bit first, but after getting guard tackle defensive line linebacker, I mean, the world is their oyster uh, in the draft. Now they don't have that many high quality picks, but, that means they can have a real holistic approach, hopefully, and uh, maximize. Just play the board, how it falls to them. That's the way to do it. And it seems like the Broncos, after day one of free agency, are leaning more towards that. You know, like the, oh my God, we have to draft a tackle no matter what. Tackle's still on the board, but right now on paper, there isn't a day one avenue for a tackle there. doesn't mean they shouldn't take it. It's a round three pick. But now you're not sitting there, oh my God, we have to take a tackle. Mm -hmm. Great spot to be. Naj coming in 1999. Appreciate you brothers. Appreciate you Naj. And that's going to have to do it for us in case anybody else comes in. But uh, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Uh, make sure you're following. Uh, oh, I got to get rid of that one. Make sure you're following Scott on Twitter. Scott is at Scout Kennedy. I'm at Nick Kendall MHH. Also make sure you're following us at BFB underscore pod and at mile high huddle. Uh, make sure also you're joining us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash mile high huddle and facebook.com forward slash mile high huddle pod. And oh, Instagram too. Instagram at mile underscore high underscore huddle and as the ticker says underneath there please subscribe like and share over on youtube click that thumbs up click that bell so that way you know when we go live appreciate you guys you guys killed it today uh dropping the big bucks like the uh, the broncos did yesterday and the walton penner group uh you guys have a great day as amy says um uh, maybe some more broncos news today we'll see uh we didn't even talk that much about all the trade rumors uh for the broncos wide receivers what does that mean brandon cook's available broncos need speed i mean we're going to have a lot to get into just yet. So make sure you guys are sticking around mile high little articles dropping like crazy over there. So make sure you're checking that out. Uh, but until later tonight, when I'm back with chat or back with uh, Carl, you guys mm -hmm. have a great one. Uh, Scott, any plans the rest of the day? You know, just, just continue to work. Trying to get some oxygen and keep up with this stuff. So got plenty of work to do. That's for sure. All right. Well, I'm going to get off here. Uh, bother chat again saying, Hey, is my computer here yet? Um, and then uh, see you guys tonight. But until then, make sure you guys continue to choose kindness and compassion. Go Broncos.